Hey community, today I am here with mycologist Jessica Wolf from Grow Mushrooms Canada and she's taken her passion for wild food and food sovereignty and turned it into a really interesting and unique business in helping people cultivate mushrooms. Although you know, this is all there, right? That's So one thing I love that you're doing is growing all kinds of different types of mushrooms. So we've, I know that all of these are, are medicinal, but a lot of them are edible too. We've got many different varieties of oyster here. I see the turkey tail, the wine caps, the shiitakes, but also reishi and chicken of the woods and other really cool types. Tell us a, bit, a little bit about that. Like what got you into such diversity? Diversity is fun. Right? So <laughs> experimentation? Every, every, or? Uh, yeah. And every mushroom has a different texture and taste. And mm. um, I, I think I'm really into texture. I like the really firm. The mouthfeel. I like the firm um, king oyster. The, mm. and, uh, Those are good. Yeah. yeah. So, and they are so different. You know, the, the pom-pom of a lion's mane and people making uh, vegan crab cakes from it. Right. And there's just so many, so much diversity. The colors, mm. the yellow oysters, so beautiful. They're beautiful. And I, then we've, I, yeah. we're starting up the pink oyster. They're tropical species, so we don't sell them through the winter time because we don't think they can manage through Canada's winter being right. shipped. Um, but we're starting up the pink oyster, which is really it's glorious. Beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All the oysters are really cool. Wine caps are neat because they're just they grow so big and they're so easy. Like are they, they're just yeah, uh, they're one of my favorites. Yeah, wine caps are very easy and. You, you know, it's it's really easy to grow mushrooms. You can take it to the far level where you need a lot of equip, equipment and stuff if you want to get right into it. But for the average person, you really don't need much at yeah. all to get started in growing mushrooms. I think that's what um, was exciting to me when I saw that you were starting up Grow Mushrooms Canada. Is like you're taking all the hard work out of the equation, making it easy for us to just like, oh wow, okay, here's what I do, and boom, now I've got food, and really empowering us to like start to then take that, even the leftover substrate, and put it into new stuff. So I really want to make sure that people understand that when this is done fruiting, it's not the end of the life cycle. No. What, 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 so give us a couple of like, what do we do with it then? Yeah, so I would take this, this bag and I could start by fruiting it if I if I You could do a second run of fruit yeah, too I on could the get, bag. I could get maybe three or four flushes okay. of mushrooms out of this bag. Um, then I could take this and instead of just composting it, if I had a tree fall down um, in the winter storm, I could cut the tree up into rounds and uh, crumble up this mycelium and sawdust and put it in between like layers. Sandwich of, it. Like a sandwich, a log sandwich, I call it. Mm. Um, I could also- I like the sound of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I like making shiitake um, into uh, like. So you take the mycelium, you put them between rounds, and yeah. sort of stack it up. Stack it up, mm. uh, and then you just let it sit outside and let nature do its thing. What else can you do with wood? Well, we can use the log in other ways. Um, just involves a bit of tools, like a drill. All mm -hmm. you need is a drill. You drill holes into like a three or four foot long section of a log. And then you can either insert some of the sawdust bomb with a special tool. Right. Um, or you can um, use our plug spawn, which is really easy. You just need a hammer and you just tap the plug spawn in. That's well how I got into growing mushrooms the first time was, was using plugs and dowels. And I found it super intuitive and super easy to grow. Um, plus you're creating these little time capsules, right? By plugging them and covering them in wax. And it's just, they grow for a number of years. At least the ones I had, we had 10 years of good growth. Oh. Yeah, see, seasonally, they'll. They, it takes a while, it takes patience, mm. and I used to go down and stare at my shiitake logs <laughs> night after night, waiting for the very first mushroom to ever grow. Right. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Yeah, right, because that first year can be a bit defeatist, because you put all this work in, <laughs> yeah, making right. these logs, and then they don't do anything for a but year and once, a half. Or... Once they're ready and they fruit for the first time, then you have many years of mushroom production from mm. the log. So how long does it usually take? Do you find a year and a half? Yeah, that's that's an, and that depends on if you do them in the fall or the spring, right? Yeah, yeah. and and see now that's that's something where I was um, wanting to learn more about 
Canadian specifically, mm -hmm. because a lot of in all my reading, it was from the, the United States, yeah, the Southeast all States, and and so it's we've got totally different climate here. And they would say, "Oh, you're going to get a mushroom in six months." Well, after six months, you know, going down and looking at my logs every day it took a long time. You're just like, "Come on, <laughs> logs!" <laughs> another another year. What am I doing wrong? Uh, so yeah, here in our climate, on the red alder that I was growing on, it took a year and a half for the first fruiting. Yeah, and I noticed you had a few different types of logs. So you had like red alder, which is the one I've always grown shiitakes on, mm -hmm. and I think is just a great medium. But also noticed maples. You had you had some grown on maple. Yeah, we have um, the big leaf maple here on Vancouver Island. Um, if you can get your hands on some oak, that's great too. Mm. Across Canada, there's other trees: the beech, birch, maple. So what are so maybe just like at a high level, what are some of the best? Is it all deciduous trees that are best for growing mushrooms on? Mm. Most of the commonly cultivated mushrooms are grown on hardwood, so deciduous trees that lo lose their leaves for the winter time. Okay. But I'm really interested because we have a lot of coniferous trees in sure Canada. Do. I'm really interested in expanding our repertoire of species that can grow on conifer trees. And yeah. the, um, there is a well, like one chicken of like the woods. The, I, yeah, I see chicken in of the nature, woods. right? And mm. there's also uh, one like the lion's mane, the, the bear's, bear's head, head right. that grows right. here on Douglas fir and and uh, the the true fir trees. So I'm interested in expanding our knowledge and our culture base around. Awesome. I love that you're always. It's like this continual improvement, um, educating. I saw that on. The website that you actually had bear's head and i was like wow yeah. not a very commonly sold mushroom but it's you know with lion's mane having such a buzz around i can't remember what it's good for again oh yeah memory <laughs> memory right 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 the bear's head really offers an opportunity to get something more locally hybridized and then also as you're saying yeah growing on different substrates yeah they're pretty exciting cool. mushrooms. Cool, <laughs> cool. Yeah, you, you look excited about them. So we've talked about growing grain spawn and sawdust spawn and pellets, but what do you do with some of these other substrates? I see you've got straw here. I see there's some coffee grounds, and I also see these wood pellets. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. There's all sorts of uh, waste organic materials you can grow on and some things that you can pick up from your local farm and feed store, like straw is really great for growing oyster mushrooms. Um, not all species will grow on straw, but oyster mushrooms, if you're a beginner grower, mm. they're, the, they're your starting They're place. the easiest one, right? Yeah, they're a super aggressive mm. uh, colonizer of the medium. Of whatever so they're it gonna, is. They're gonna take over before any mold gets a hold and, and give so you So what about wine caps? Mushrooms. Do they grow on straw too? Wine caps grow on straw also. Um, so you could plant the straw into a, a bucket with mixing it just with the the uh, sawdust spawn and uh, in the bucket. Do you sterilize the straw or, or do you just? Is it well, kind of... that's up to you. Mm. It's always uh, a, an option to um, sterilize it so that there's no mold spores. Uh, if you have the means to do it and the patience, but if just if, just boiling it down like double double yeah, boiling oh, trouble. Yeah. The the real easy way is to just actually put it in into a container and pour hot water on it, mm. really hot water on it, and let it sit for an hour and a half, and then drain it really well, mm. and then plant it. Right. But you don't have to do that. It just increases your success right. because it it. It knocks back any mold contamination in there. So oysters and um, wine, wine caps, caps anything are, else? Are great on the straw. You could also grow um, yellow oysters. We have a number of different varieties okay. of oysters mm -hmm. that you can grow on straw. Um, and they also both like to grow on the wood chips as well. And oysters will grow on coffee grounds. Which is so, great because... Yeah. So it's really a great use of your leftover waste. Um, and you can grow them on uh, hardwood chips or these pellets are pure compressed sawdust. So mm. if I hydrate that, it turns into uh, sawdust. Right, and you can just get those from the animal feed store or from the... Yeah, yeah. Bucker Fields or from yep. your local um, hardware store as well. Right. And so... Lots more things will grow on the sawdust. Lots yeah. more species. And we can make wood chips ourselves easily. You could if you've got uh, you've got some uh, branches that you want to chip up. Mm -hmm. And so you can grow this in a garden bed on the ground and or in a bucket. And the bucket's just the container to hold it all That's together, right. really, right? 
It is, and um, you'll need a place for the mushrooms to emerge from, so you drill holes in the bucket, and Perfect. the mushrooms will pop out. Do you, do you moisten that, or do you, is there any kind of upkeep for those buckets? Um, you would want it, well, you would want drainage in the bottom mm -hmm. if you're allowing any rain to fall on there. You yep. don't, you don't want it to collect and be a puddle of water because right. that'll kill it. Yeah. So you, you would have to have drainage in the bottom of the bucket and um, holes in the side. And you can um, put a lid on it. You could even do that indoors. People do that indoors. Right. Um, but then the moisture, when it's time, when it's all white with mycelium, it, then it's the time to keep it moist outside. So okay. if, the, if, if nature's cooperating and you've got a nice rainy week, you're going to get mushrooms fruiting on their own without much work. But if it's dry, then you're going to have to do rig something up to keep it humid. And I've done things as simple as having a shelf unit, yep. draping the plastic over, and taking my hose and spraying the inside of the plastic to keep it humid. Yeah, you get quite um, ingenu ingenuitive to really like just come up with different custom settings to like yeah. to get them growing yeah you just really you just gotta think like a mushroom right think like a mushroom <laughs> act like a mushroom <laughs> be one with the mushrooms <laughs> and you will <were> fruit <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah and fun gal <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so lastly i want to ask you about growing reishi now i have a special place in my heart for reishi this is a one of my favorite mushrooms and i see that you're growing in here and that you have um, some experience with that so maybe for those of us who want to produce our own medicinal reishi give us a few tips and ways to get started on that there's another one too the turkey tail is uh -huh. another one and both of them are uh very slow growing so yeah. the mushrooms themselves are slow to form and it's a trick mm -hmm. because it's hard to hand mist every day for months right <laughs> right uh, so one thing i've done um, with the reishi is just leave them in the bag. Now, this is not something I do with the other species because they would just not form right. proper mushrooms. But the reishi, it's, it's kind of deformed, but it's a huge fruit body yeah, in here. Yeah, there's a lot so of fruit it's just, in there. Uh, it just kept the moisture inside the bag, and I didn't do anything. I just left it and in And they the look more room. like reishi antlers, too, which I understand yes. is a little higher potency in some of the active compounds, oh. but also a more CO2 environment, right? That That's produces right. The antlers. That's yeah. right. Right, so that's the the thing is that we did not give this any air exchange. Mm -hmm. Well, I was up. looking at this one right here, and I just like, wow, what a cool, isn't it? Looking... And people are interested in fungal sculpting and things too. Mm -hmm. So it, what a what a fascinating thing to do. Yeah, and very easy. Yeah, and you can see it really did digest a lot of that substrate. It did, it's like a big sponge. Yeah, cool. Um, if you harvested this. It's now that's like going to get one harvest off this though, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 But there's still life in this fungal For mycelium, sure. so I could be planting that into a maple log. Right. So yeah, so maple is, that's what I've heard too. Maple is one of the best ones for growing or harder woods for growing reishi. Um, what else if we have other, access to other wood would be? Oh, well, people are often asking about cherry trees yeah. and, and fruit trees are reportedly not the best mushroom growing trees mm -hmm. um, however i have seen turkey tail growing on wild cherry maybe for sure me too yeah that's that's yeah. Uh, yeah so that's something i'm wanting to experiment more with is, mm. is uh success and i've got so would you plug trees. them with sawdust or or pellets yeah, or? With, with some of the uh the with some of the the plugs mm -hmm. and you do turkey tail but would you try cherry and reishi or would you try cherry you gotta and... try everything yeah i gotta try i guess that's so. how we learned all that we know because we have that bitter cherry here and it, it's it definitely um i've got some in my house and i'm thinking about plugging it up okay well i'll let you know what i find out too please do that that's our whole goal is to collect as much information about specific to growing mushrooms across canada yeah. so that we can share that knowledge with everybody i love that yeah so if you are in canada if you are watching this video make sure to leave a comment around some of your experience with growing mushrooms uh, let's keep that conversation going and make sure of course you like the video because we've got lots more to share on this all in all i'm seeing that there are so many different ways we can grow mushrooms this is a health empowering thing a lifestyle exchange something to get us a little closer connected to ourselves and to our food any last tips you would give to any would-be mycologists or mushroom growers who are just starting out absolutely i would say you want to start with something that's going to give you success and that would be an oyster mushroom kit 
where mm. all you have to do is cut it open and put a humidity tent over it and spray inside and mushrooms will grow out of it. Easy, right? Yeah. The second uh, next thing I would suggest is uh, maybe an outdoor bed with the wine caps. Yeah, in your garden, like they're kind of garden giants yeah. or garden... Garden yeah. giants is another name for them. They're mm -hmm. such an impressive mushroom and you just got to spread the spread the spawn around at the base of your raspberry bed with in, in some straw. It's that simple. Perfect. Yeah. And, and then if you have access to some wood, some freshly fallen logs, then planting shiitake or oyster in them would be my next uh, suggestion. Love that. So start with success. And these are three really easy ways to get going. As well as any of the kits you do come with like instructions and ways to like get them to fruit and stuff like that. Yeah, and we, we, we'll be developing a greater resource on our uh, website as well with lots of educational videos. Well, thank you so much. That's at uh, growmushroomscanada.ca, right? That's right. Awesome. All right, my friends, may you live long and pro spore. We'll see you next time.